I am Linda Fintelberg for Biz News. Well, in recent years, there have been numerous reports about the degradation of river systems in South Africa, largely linked to municipalities' inability to effectively treat wastewater. Well, these challenges are the driving force for research at the University of the Free State into utilizing mushrooms and microfiltration techniques to enhance the quality of contaminated water. And I have Sanele Mkandla, a researcher at the University University to, to explain how this works. Um, hi, Sanella, and um, thanks for, for coming to Biz News. Hi, Linda. Thank you for having me. Well, before we dive into the role of mushrooms, can you provide an overview of the pollution levels in our river due to insufficient water treatment by municipalities? How bad is the problem? Well, the problem is quite bad, although um, we didn't um, actually assess the pollutants that are there and the levels. We did do a study in 2020, but because um, they're not always level, um, but what we know for a fact is that the 2023 Green Drop Report, this is a report that assesses the wastewater treatment plant systems in South Africa. So according to that report, in our municipality, all the wastewater treatment plants are in critical state. So it's either they're not, yeah, so it's either they're not working at all or they're, they're working very poorly. So as a result, whatever effluent is discharged into um, effluent receiving water bodies is going to be loaded with all types of pollutants at high level. And not only is that a problem for our rivers in our municipality, the problem extends to other provinces because our rivers feed into the Val uh, River Basin and that services um, other provinces, that's Mpumalana and Haute. So the problem is actually quite big. So what did you find? What is in the water? Is pharmaceuticals a problem? Yes. So there are pharmaceuticals and um, a colleague in our research group uh, who assessed, who just looked at pharmaceuticals in the water bodies in Kwaikwa. They found that they are uh, medicines for treating um, HIV, they're anti-inflammatories, antibiotics, medicines for TB and diabetes. So those are already present in our water bodies. In addition to that, there are metals, heavy metals uh, are also there. Um, we have not looked at any microbial contaminants like E. coli, but for sure, it's they're guaranteed to be present because those are also um, found in, in, in wastewater. So if that wastewater is not treated properly, then they'll definitely be present in the water bodies. And what would the effect on people be if they consume water with all that in it? You know, it must be de detrimental. Uh, yes, it definitely poses some uh, health challenges, health risks. Um, for example, exposure to, 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 to E. coli that's where we have uh, cases of um, cholera outbreaks, for example. Consumption of those heavy metals, heavy metals in our bodies do cause um, a variety of uh, problems. Oxidative stress can result because of the presence of heavy metals in our bodies, and that has a domino effect in terms of then causing diseases in our bodies. So it's definitely a health um risk and something has to be done urgently. So what makes mushrooms or fungi, you know, effective for filtering wastewater? So the beauty about fungi is that they just have to exist. Just their mere existence uh, brings about these benefits that we need to clean up water. So because um, the remediation takes advantage of the natural features and process, processes of fungi, um, they become suitable for bioremediation. So for example, the enzymes that fungi secrete, they are not specific in nature. So they are able to break down different kinds of pollutants that are present in the water. So they are, they are, they are, they are, they are broad spectrum um, in terms of their activity or their action. And then also the surfaces, the, the cell walls of the fungi, 
they ha- the, the cell wall is made up of different components. They are carbohydrates, they are proteins and lipids. And each of those have what we call functional groups that are involved in trapping contaminants. So it's again, it's just using these natural features. The fungi are also able to bioaccumulate uh, contaminants in, into their cells. And in the cells, various processes take place that then break down those contaminants. So it's just a beautiful organism that just exists and is able to just clean up the environment. Well, can you give us a picture of what this looks like? I mean, if you say you use mushrooms or fungi, what are they? Are they made into another material or are they as is? How, how are they used? So if you're familiar with growing mushrooms, then that's exactly the process. So the, the, the type of fungi we use are what we call, what are called saprophytic fungi. So they feed on dead organic matter. So these are your oyster mushrooms, for example. So what you simply need is your substrate. So in our case, we were using thatching straw, which you collect from the field. And then you have your, your mushroom seed or your spawn. So you mix the two, and then you allow for incubation to take place in a dark and humid environment. So the mycelia or the fungi will then spread all over the substrate. So those enzymes that I mentioned earlier, they secrete those enzymes to, to break down the straw that the straw is its food source. So as it consumes the straw, it's spreading all over it. And because we're not really focusing on growing mushrooms, we don't allow the mushrooms to fall. So that unit before mushrooms form, that is what we use as the as the microfilter. Sure. So um, how did you come up with this idea? So I listened to a TED talk by a gentleman from the United States, his name is Paul Stamets. So he was talking about how mushrooms can save the world. So I, I was left, I was intrigued because all I know is mushrooms as a food source and not saving the world. So yeah, he explained how they do that. And from there, I, 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 I read all his papers. I listened to more of his talks and I I just went down that rabbit hole and I was very intrigued about it. And I thought, this is definitely something that I would want to uh, get into. And considering the water problems that we have in Southern Africa, maybe this could be a solution to, to our problems. So that's where it all started. So how effective is it in practice? I mean, how good is it compared to other ways of filtering water? Um, well, it, it is quite effective. So I'll, I'll make reference to what we have done in the lab. So we have, um, filtered different kinds of solutions and even real wastewater. So we found that, for example, metals like ferric iron, the ones that are are typically released or or found where there's acid mine drainage, there was more than 80% removal of ferric iron in solution. And we also would also we also looked at the pesticide in the clopid. We didn't have that much removal, but only about 30%. Um, and then when we looked at um, real wastewater, uh, it, there was some variation there. For some metals, there would be removal, and for for other metals, there weren't. Our, our focus was only on metal. But for heavy metals, for example, we had up to 50% removal of mercury in wastewater. And we had more than 90% removal of um, phosphorus. And also that's a plus because um, phosphorus is a nutrient that's responsible for eutrophication, the eutrophication that we see in some of our water bodies. So if the, the microfilter can can remove phosphorus, then that means we can reduce levels or chances of eutrophication, you know, happening. So yeah, it is, it is uh, quite effective in practice, if I can say so. So what are the steps needed to scale it to sort of large wastewater treatment facilities? Is it possible to scale it? It is possible, um, but it, it all comes down to funding. <laughs> So definitely need funding 
So because we've been working on, on, on a lab scale, the next step would be to move on to a pilot scale. So designing a pilot plant uh, that mimics, you know, the uh, usual conditions of a wastewater treatment plant and then seeing how we can install our microfilters. And then if we get good results from there, um, we can now think of collaborating maybe with, with the engineers from the municipality to see then how, what steps can we take now if we want to now move on to um, large scale at the, at the treatment plants. Now we're talking designing, we're talking upscaling of calculations and all of that. So we still have um, a way to go, but uh, funds permitting, it is very possible to implement this on a large scale. Well, Sinella, can you give us a bit about your background? You know, why this interest in wastewater, in mushrooms? You talked about the TED talk, but um, who are you? Okay, so um, I am uh, a girl born and bred in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. So I've always had interest in, in the sciences and biology was my favorite subject. So I think my, my enthusiasm started from there in high school. So I knew university, I would definitely be in the sciences, the biological sciences. So I have a background in biochemistry. That's my undergraduate and master's um, degree. And so now getting into research, I, I, I got started, started working at uh, NAST, the, the university that I mentioned earlier, as a research fellow. And that's where I joined the ecotoxicology research group. So that is where I got exposed really to the environment and issues around the environment. And so I got interested in, in the remediation aspect of it. So having, I listened to that TED talk while I was, you know, working in the lab <laughs> at NAST. So from there, I started now thinking of, okay, what, how can I conceptualize this? What can I do so that I can have something, come up with something that, you know, we can maybe then later on implement to improve our water situations. Uh, do you eat mushrooms? <laughs> I love mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. Which is why I was intrigued when I heard that talk saying mushrooms can save the world. Like how? I, I know mushrooms on pizza. I have mushrooms like pizza. But now they can save the world. Let's find out more. And now we're here. Well, Sanella Mkandla, thanks so much for speaking to us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And 